evening. Welcome to evening prayer with St. James Episcopal Church in Skinny Atlas. We are live streaming, so welcome to those who are joining us online as well. There is a bulletin for this service that is on the website at stjamesscan.org, but we also follow the prayer book, and I will be announcing the page numbers. For those of you present in the nave, the entirety of the liturgy is in the bulletin, and you won't need anything else. Tonight, we are transferring one of the feasts of the liturgical year, which is the presentation of our Lord in the temple. It is celebrated on February 2nd, but we are going to be doing the readings tonight. And it's also, February 2nd is also the date of uh, Candlemas, which historically was the time in the church year when people would bring their candles that they were going to be using for light throughout the year in their homes and also the candles that would be used in the church on the altar and they would all be blessed for the year. Michael Larkin thought I made that up the first time that we celebrated it here, but I, I did not. It is truly uh, one of the, the feasts of the liturgical year. So we begin, uh, I also want to thank my team that's here tonight, Danae Heidi on tech and Sister Marie Patricia Hughes who will be doing the readings and the prayers. We begin with opening sentences that are for the season after the epiphany and uh, one is from the prophet Isaiah and one is from the prophet Malachi. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, my name shall be great among the nations, and in every place incense shall be offered to my name and a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. And I invite you to join me saying the confession aloud. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Turning to page 117, if you're following in the Book of Common Prayer, I invite you to say the responses of the invitatory. O God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And this verse for the season after Epiphany, would you please say it with me? The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. And now turning to page 118, for those following in the prayer book, I invite you to say aloud with me the Phos Hilaron, which begins, O gracious light. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, 
Now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Our psalm tonight is Psalm 84, and it will be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 707, 707. Let's do it by every other verse. I will, it, while you're at home, you can do it as well. I will say the first verse or the odd numbers and ask you to repeat with the second, num- uh, the even numbers. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young side of your altars. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose charts are set on them. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room, and to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson tonight is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, and it comes from the contemporary English version. We are people of flesh and blood. That is why Jesus became one of us. He died to destroy the devil who had power over death. But he also died to rescue all of us who live each day in fear of dying. Jesus clearly did not come to help angels, but he did come to help Abraham's descendants. He had to be one of us so that he could serve God as our merciful and faithful high priest and sacrifice himself for the forgiveness of our sins. And now that Jesus has suffered and was tempted, he can help anyone else who is tempted. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you now to join me in saying the words of the cot, which is the song of Mary, and found on page 119 in the Book of Common Prayer. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson tonight is from Luke chapter 2, and it is the New Living Translation. Then it was time for their purification offering as required by the law of Moses after the birth of a child. So his parents took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. The law of the Lord says, if a woman's first child is a boy, he must be dedicated to the Lord. So they offered the sacrifice required in the, in the law of the Lord, either a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people Israel. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them, and he said to Mary, the baby's mother, this child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall and many others to rise. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your very soul. Anna, a prophet who was also there in the temple, she was a daughter of Phanuel from the tribe of Asher, and she was very old. Her husband died when they had been married only seven years. Then she lived as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple but stayed there day and night, worshiping God and fasting with fasting and prayer. She came along as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph, and she began praising God. She talked about the child to everyone who had been waiting expectantly for God to rescue Jerusalem. When Jesus' parents had fulfilled all the requirements of the law of the Lord, they returned home to Nazareth in Galilee. There the child grew up healthy and strong. He was filled with wisdom, and God's favor was on him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me now in saying the words of the Nunc Dimittis. It's found on page 120 in the Book of Common Prayer. And uh, this is actually the Song of Simeon, so we are repeating his words, if you would say it with me. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So I'm going to read to you tonight um, from Sam Portero's book, brightest and best, but I want to say a couple things first about the readings. This reading from uh, Psalm 84, I can almost hear Anna's voice in this psalm, even though they weren't her words. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. Uh, she, I mean, what what the um, gospel reading tells us from Luke is that she, she never left the temple. She was there day and night. Something, something moved in her, which was no doubt the Holy Spirit, that um, at this, in these last days of her life, 
what she wanted more than anything was to be close to God. And what a beautiful, um, what a beautiful unfolding of a life to get to that place where your longing is just for this deep relationship with God. And then um, I, I want to point out, because you're going to hear this in the reflection from Sam Portero, but in the, in the passage from Luke, uh, Simeon doesn't actually say, um, he doesn't actually say that he knows who Jesus is. The, I'm gonna, let me read you this again. Uh, the Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Now, the word Messiah actually means anointed. So what Simeon, when Simeon sort of has this, probably what was somewhat like an ecstatic, um, just kind of bursting forth with these words, he knows that he has seen an act of God. Now, does he know that this is Jesus, the Son of God? We don't really know that. Uh, we know that looking back, but did Simeon know that? Uh, it's unclear. And even Anna, um, in the words that Luke records, um, it, it's a little bit unclear what she knows. She says, um, she talked about the child um, that everyone had been waiting expectantly that God would send to rescue Jerusalem. Well, they were expecting, uh, you know, they were expecting someone to come on a horse with a sword and, and uh, defeat the Romans, and that's not what happened. And so what's kind of interesting to me about this reading is looking back, we assume that they both knew that Jesus was the Son of God. Well, what they, they knew something, but they didn't know everything. And isn't that often uh, how God moves in our lives, is that we know something but that, that kind of pulls us forward into whatever the next chapter is, but we don't, we don't know everything. And, and it's all of those other details that we simply have to trust God for. And when we live that practice of trusting God for the parts that we don't know, we, we end up in a place where Simeon and Anna were, where, where what we experience is kind of a grateful joy, that I got to be part of this story at all, that I know that I'm a part of a bigger story, and what a blessing that is. So let me read to you a little bit about um, what Sam Portero says about this presentation of our Lord Today is the 40th day after the Nativity, so 40th day after Christmas. After 40 days, the Jewish woman who has been delivered of a child is considered ritually purified, restored to the fullness of her health and vitality. Her body rested from the ordeals of labor and the trauma of birth itself, and her natural cycles returned to stability. She may now be received in the temple precincts and return to the public life of corporate worship. So just think about that for a minute. What an important moment that was for, for Mary, who would have been isolated from her community and from her practice of worship. Um, we, we all know about isolation after the pandemic. And what a joy I mean, I even think about it recently. What a joy it is. Just We... we uh, had friends in our home for the first time in, I don't know, three years. And just what a joy to be together again with people. So that's part of what she was experiencing. On the 40th day, so, but, so that's one thing, the part that's for Mary. Then there's another piece of it. On the 40th day, the child and family enter the temple to redeem this new life. And here's the explanation. Because all creation and thus all children belong to God, parents of Jesus' day offered the first male child to God as the first fruits of the harvest of their marriage. What a, what a beautiful practice and a little scary. But alongside the child are offered the sacrificial animals whose lives are taken that the child may live. Joseph and Mary probably saw nothing extraordinary in the ritual they kept. 
the minimal requirement of the law established that at least two turtle doves or young pigeons be sacrificed. And they were so poor, they, they could probably um, barely afford the most inexpensive of the, of the offerings. And um, Portero goes on at some length in a, in a beautiful kind of a way to talk about what, what was it that Anna and Simeon saw at that moment, these two people who spent much of their life in the temple. And part of what they saw was two very plain, ordinary people who were simply being faithful and doing what their religion required of them. And yet, at the same time, they were given a knowing that this was not just any ordinary family, but something great was going to come from this. And Portero finishes by saying, this sight filled them with joy, filled their life with meaning, their love, their faith, and their hope fulfilled. They could go to death in peace. They saw at the end of long and very full lives and the blessedness of life's wisdom and God's grace that God requires far less than we may think, only what we are. So the Feast of the Presentation, Mary was offering herself, Mary and Joseph were offering Jesus. This is what we do every Sunday, we offer ourselves. It's what we do whenever we pray, we offer ourselves to God in the simplicity of who we are. And then God meets us more than halfway by showing us just sometimes a glimpse of the incredible story that we are part of day in and day out. And my prayer for you all, my friends, would be that you get to see a glimpse of what God is doing in your life today, tomorrow, and the next day. Let us now join together saying the words of the Apostles' Creed. If you're using a prayer book, it's on page 120. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers will be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 121. Please pray with me. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Intercessory prayers A will be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 121. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. 
At this time, we invite those on Facebook to post your prayer request and those present in person to speak your intercessions aloud. I'd like to pray tonight for Mimi, Jean, Frank, and Joan, all who have passed away uh, recently, that they will find peace in heaven. And today is the birthday, three years old, of Milo Kerper. He turns three today, so I would like to say a prayer for Milo and his parents, Jeremy and Jan, Jen, ben and his ben grandparents, ben Kip and Rachel. And Ben and, ben and, ben and Rachel. Rachel. I did the wrong one. Sorry. That's oh, okay. well, I guess they needed prayers, too. Yeah, and they, they, have, they have Rose and Dylan. So now I've got everybody covered in the family. And his grandparents, who happen to be sitting here, Kip and Becky, who love them, who love Milo to the moon and back. And also, Lord, we ask you to bless this darling little boy. Pray for my sister Cindy as she anticipates surgery. I pray for all of St. James as we prepare for the annual meeting. For those leaders who will be speaking. For the uh, items on which we will be voting. And um, give thanks for the vestry that are rotating off for their dedication their their faith, their love, their courage. And we pray also for those candidates who have um, willingly stepped forward to serve for election and for all that you will do through them, Lord, we give thanks. And I don't, oh, do you and the church want to pray for anything? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, and we would like to pray for Danae, who has got a job interview and uh, may have another one as well, and for Laura, and for the staff at St. James, and as Becky said, for the vestry. The prayer of the day. Almighty and ever-living God, we humbly pray that as your only begotten Son was presented in the temple, so we may be presented to you with pure and clean hearts by Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And I see some people on Facebook that might be able to use a prayer or two, so I will pray for you and hope that you, God takes care of you and guides you. Prayer for our nation. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease. That our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. You, O God, have bound us together in a common life, Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And that prayer made me remember that we should be grateful, or I am very grateful, for listening to Bishop Jennifer last night. It was an amazing witness of what she does and we were very fortunate, so blessings on her as well. And a prayer for protection. O oh God, the life of all who live, the light of the faithful, the strength of those who labor, and the repose of the dead, we thank you for the blessings of this day that is past, and humbly ask for your protection through the coming night. Bring us safety to Bring us safely to the morning hours through him who died and rose again for us, your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And a prayer for mission. O oh God, you manifest in your servants the signs of your presence, 
Send forth upon us the spirit of love, that in companionship with one another, your abounding grace may increase among us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, it's good to be with you all uh, here in the church this night. And just a word that at the end, uh, Danae will stop the um, live stream, but it takes a minute, so we all just kind of sit quietly, and then we'll have a moment to greet one another. And again, welcome to those who are on the live stream. We do have coming up this Sunday, St. James annual meeting. The annual report will be available on Sunday morning. It is always a very rich and inspiring read. Uh, a look back over the year of all the things that have gone on in the various ministries and the mission of this parish. We will be voting on the uh, candidates for vestry. We also have two fairly mundane changes to the bylaws that we'll be voting on, and John Gilley and the finance team, uh, Nicole Bova, will be giving us a presentation of the budget and of the financial report from the past years. And all of it is uh, just remarkably good news. So um, I do encourage you to participate if you can. It will take place immediately after the last service on Sunday. You can join us here in the nave or on Facebook. Uh, it will be live streamed and you just go to the website and click on the button. It's as simple as that. You don't you don't have to go through Facebook or anything fancy. And all of the information about what we will be uh, voting on is on the website and in the weekly and every place you can imagine because that's what Laura Pesesnik does. So please do join us if you can. Also, the, the main uh, speech is my annual address. Laura Pesesnik is going to talk about children's ministry and John Watt will be talking about the capital campaign. All of those will be recorded and posted on the website. So if you miss the meeting, you can still hear those uh, reports. If you would please join me in saying the general thanksgiving found on page 125 in the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Good night, everyone.